Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So in today's video, I'm going to make a two-color reduction woodcut on Baltic birch plywood. So before we jump into today's print, this video is going to be a little bit different than normal. I've been wanting to upgrade my mezzotint pole rocker jig for a while. The one I use that you might have seen in other videos is made from plumbing parts and is bulky and it's just not ideal for what I want. So I reached out to John over at Saunders Machine Works. He runs the YouTube channel NYCCNC and I've been a fan for years so I talked to him and discussed what I was looking to have made. And so as it turns out, John enjoys art and prints and so we decided to do a little bit of a swap. So I'm going to make the print for him and then he's going to make the pole rocker jig for me. And then once I get the part that he is making, I'll make a whole video separate just for that showing you know, what I had made and how I'm going to use it. In the meantime, make sure to check out John's channel, NYCCNC. I'll put a link in the description box below. He's a great guy and he posts videos from machining to CAD to programming and some electronic videos. And he's really a great part of the YouTube community. So let's go ahead and get this print done for John. A reduction wood cuts from a single piece of wood or lino if that's what you're using. They take a little bit of planning, but they're pretty straightforward. So first we clear out the material to make our base layer of the image and then run a print. Now for the next layer, we clear out more of the block and print it on top of that previous layer. Finally, for the last layer, we clear out even more material, ink up the block, and run the final print. And that's the basics of a simple reduction woodcut. So my first step is going to be to tape down my artwork onto the wood panel. So I did this drawing and then I had it photocopied so we have a toner print on a piece of paper. And it has to be a toner from like a laser jet printer. You can't use an inkjet printer for this process. And then to transfer the toner onto your wood, I'm using a bottle of tea tree oil that I got at the pharmacy. And I've been told that wintergreen oil works and I've also been using uh, blender markers in my other videos. So I'm just trying different methods to see which one I like the best. And I'll have links in the description box to all the stuff I used in this video. The transfer wasn't amazing, but it was really just an outline anyways. Now I'm going through with a marker and making it look how I really want. And after I get the black line work, I'm going through and drawing in all the areas that I want to be gray. This is going to be a black, gray, and white print. And then after I have all the gray areas filled in, I'm marking what I want to remain white on the final print. And so I'm marking that with blue and then I'm carving away everything that's blue on the block. And also, if you're interested, I've been doing some live streaming when I'm working on these prints. So I'll put a link in the description box for that if you want to tune in. I usually post on Twitter when I'm going to be live streaming. But you can chat and kind of see what's going on. And so now I'm done with the main outline and getting all the, the background cleaned out. Now I'm ready to start to move on to the other areas. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and set up the registration area for the paper. So for this block, I'm cutting out a straight line about an inch and a half away from the edge of the board. And I'm using the knife tool to cut through multiple layers of the plywood. And I'm going to go ahead and clean out right up against that line. And so what that's going to do is it'll give me a perfectly straight edge to line up my paper. So just like my other woodcut projects, I'll be able to lay the paper right up against that edge and there'll be a mark in the center of the paper and also on the center of the board. And it'll line up and register perfect. Because with the reduction woodcut, you really want to get the registration as close as possible since each layer is going to lay on top of the previous layers. So any misregistration or overlap is really going to show up strong. Alright, now the last piece I have to carve is going to be the white highlights and all the letters. And I've been kind of putting this off because I was afraid I'd mess it up because they're so small and detailed. But I had to get to it, so here we go. I cut the outline of each letter with a knife tool and it's beveled on one side so it keeps a strong edge of the wood block. And then I go in afterwards with my dockyard micro tool with this little u-gouge and I clean out the area. And that leaves nice sharp edges. And here's a block ready to print the first layer. But before that I want to use a can of clear coat and spray a thin layer across the whole block to seal in the ink that I have underneath. So for the first layer of this print I'm using titanium white and then Portland Intense Black and they're both oil-based inks from uh, Gamblin Ink. 
I also added just a little bit of blue to the mix. I also chose this color of gray because a lot of the parts I see John make over on his channel are out of aluminum. So I was kind of looking for that look. And also with the overall image, I was trying to kind of match what you see through the camera of his whole setup with the jaws of the vise and the CNC machine. So once I was happy with the final mix of ink, I went ahead and inked up the brayer and rolled it onto the block. After inking up the block, there was a couple areas I saw where the brayer rolled over and picked up some ink on the block, so I used a U-gouge and cleaned out some of those areas. I want a little bit of chatter or background on this print, but not a whole lot. And here you can see the small mark on the center of the paper, so I lined that up on a corresponding mark on the wood block, and then put the paper right up against the edge that I cut in. And this will give me reproducible alignment every time. Alright, and here's the first layer printed. And so unlike multiple block woodcuts, with a reduction woodcut, you only can print that layer while the block is in this state. So once you carve for the next layer, you can't ever go back and reproduce this layer. So I went ahead and made a lot of prints of this layer, and that way on the later steps when I print, if I mess one up, I have enough to create a finished print. So before I can go ahead and start carving for the next layer, I have to clean the ink off the block. So I'm using Turpinoid Natural, which will take off the ink but leave the clear coat and the line work that I have down below. If you're using a stronger cleaner, I don't know how it's going to react with the clear coat, so you might want to do some testing first so you don't lose your drawing underneath. So on the first layer, I carved away what I want to remain white or, you know, the paper showing through. And now for this layer, I'm carving away everything that I want to remain gray that was printed on that first block. So everything remaining on the block is going to print in black. And then for this layer, I'm carving away all the letters first. That way, in case I mess something up, it's early in the process and I don't get too far ahead in case I need to fix a mistake. And here in the live stream footage, you can see the camera mounted directly onto the wood. I just screwed a bracket right into the three quarter inch plywood. That way when I move the block around when I'm carving, it doesn't change my camera view, it just changes the background. All right, coming in the home stretch on this print. So I'm using Portland Intense Black as the, the main color. And then I'm adding a little bit of white and then a little bit of the Prussian blue just to kind of break up the, the dark black so it's a little bit softer. When it's against the white paper and then the gray ink, it's a little strong if it's just straight black out of the jar. Now I'm inking up the block and I'm ready to run it through the press. And here's the gray first layer that I printed. Now I just line up my registration marks and lay it right on the block. And this green cutting mat just helps smooth out the pressure from my rollers. All right, now peeling the paper off the block for the final print. And here it is, a two color reduction woodcut. I love the look of loose prints on paper, but never really feels complete until I have at least one that's matted and framed and completely finished. So I went ahead and did that to this one before I send it along to John. All right, so that wraps up this project. So I'm really happy with how the print turned out. You know, I tried to stay true to the logo and then add in my own style and kind of some elements that I see when I watch his videos. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this project. And also make sure to check out John's channel. I'll put a link in the description box below and hit that thumbs up if you like the video. And I'll also have links in the description box to all the tools and materials I used in this video. So I'll see you next time, thanks. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to help support the creation of these videos, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page. Thanks!